Not only is it a new month and a new theme, Stop, Look, and Listen, it is one year that we have been in our new facility. This Sunday, today, one year. Yep. We gave our first Sunday service here a year ago, first Sunday in August, and here we are a year later. Thank you. You did this. Give yourselves a pause. Acknowledgement. Yeah, this is all you. So we are in a new month. It is August. It is Stop, Look, and Listen. Today we're going to talk about <laughs> Stop. So Rhea, you're going to have to come back for the rest of the month to hear Look and Listen. <laughs> It is a new month. It's a new theme. Stop, look, and listen. And I want you to know that we coordinate our monthly themes with the Science of Mind magazine so we can all be on the same page. If you buy the magazine, if you have a monthly subscription or you get it in the Resource Center, you'll know that the themes of the articles of their magazine is, is the same themes that we use. So we're all kind of doing the same work on the same month. It's a good thing. You get support all the way around. So the theme is Stop, Look, and Listen. Uh, so today, stop. Stop. <sighs> Hamas is bombing Israel. Israel's bombing Palestine. Russia is stacking up weapons on Ukraine's border. There's a civil war in Syria. Climate change is accelerating. Ebola has already killed hundreds in West Africa, and it's spreading. Stand your ground laws, open carry gun laws, border crisis, corporate personhood, war on women, Libya's violence, stop, stop, it's too much. It is too much, right? And here's the thing. Over the 10,000 newspaper or news articles that you heard or read over this past year, how many of them have changed some important issue that you are having in your personal life? Zero. And you see, that's the challenge we're having with instant worldwide news reporting. We learn a little bit about a lot of things we can do nothing about. We can do nothing about. We have a broad but shallow understanding of very complex world events, and we can't do anything about it. We get news in these little sound bites that, that are brief and that are shallow, but not at all involved and not at all in-depth about anything anymore. So we are inundated by parts of news which only cause us to be elevated stress levels in our bodies. That's all it does. Our cortisol levels go up. We are in a state of perpetual alertness and elevated stress that damages our bodies in the long run. And add to that the idea that investigative reporting has gone out probably from the 60s and has been replaced with something called interpretive reporting, which means, I love that, right? Did you get that? Which means, okay, the news anchors don't report the news anymore. They tell us what it means to us. Right? Don't you hear them say that every night? So any thoughtful analysis on our part is eliminated because they tell us what to think about what they're telling us. Right? You hear them every night on the news. Here's what's happening in the world and what it means to you. Well, don't tell me what it means to me. Let me make up my own mind. Oh, wait, I can't because I'm not getting the whole story. I'm only getting a sound bite. I need the backstory. I need the history of the region. I need to understand what's been going on, but you can't know all of that in a sound bite. And this, this is what consumes us in the break rooms and around the water cooler and during happy hour and in our party get-togethers. This is the kind of stuff that consumes us. All these little sound bites, all these little pieces, all these little parts of things that we can't hardly understand because we don't ever get the whole story. And this is what consumes us instead of putting our attention on the only place where we can make change and that is within us only place that real fundamental change will occur in the world is if it occurs within us. This is the only place we have power. So stop. Stop. Now, I'm not saying have a moratorium on news and cut, shut it all off and don't listen to anything anymore. There's nothing wrong with being informed. You don't have to be inundated. You don't have to be inundated. So let's stop 
getting preoccupied with the things of the world we cannot change and put our attention on the things that we can change. I cannot fly over to the Middle East and negotiate peace in the Middle East, but I can pray peace. I can live peace in my life. I can experience peace in my body. I can, I can hmm, offer peace in my family. I can be the place of peace in my work, in my community. I can show up as peace in everything that I do. But in order to do that, I have to remember I am peace. I have to remember I am peace. And sometimes when I'm listening to the news, mm, it's the last place in the world that I think about. I have to remember I'm peace. I have to stop. I have to stop. As soon as I start getting, you know, the thing happens, right? We start getting irritated or agitated by the news or by what we're hearing, and then, and then we're hooked. We forget we are peace. We are peace. Something comes up, and it presses my button, my failure button or my lack button or somebody says something or does something or some event occurs that pushes a button that I've got, you know, like an unexpected bill comes up or a, or a breakdown of something and I go into my little downward spiral freak out thing that I do. Stop right there. That's the place to stop. We can stop going there. We can take a breath. We can take a moment. We can say a prayer. We don't have to go down that rabbit hole. It's a choice. We are so conditioned. We are so conditioned to think, oh, you know what he said made me so mad. Or that, in, that event, that just irritated me. Or, or something that happened, it just, just got my goat. We are so conditioned to think that the things of the outside world control us instead of the other way around. The truth is nobody does it to us. No event can make us feel a certain way. No body hurts our feelings without our buying into what they're saying. When we are uncomfortable, it's because something was lit up inside of us that we are questioning or that we're agreeing with or that we're worried about. Someone says some offhanded remark about, you know, what a, what a witch I am. <laughs> See, I'm being really good today. And, and, you know, and I get all lit up, and then I get defensive, and I have to defend. I felt like I was attacked, so I have to defend. When the fact is, oh, so there's something in me that goes, wait a minute, I know I'm a witch, but how do they know? <laughs> <laughs> and that's the button that's getting pushed, right? We're buying into it at a certain level. Oh, my God, how do they know? I thought I hide it so well. Some false belief, some word of error, something is being pushed, is being lit up. And we react to it. And here's the thing. When something happens in our world, it reminds us of something else. But that something else is usually from the past. That button that got pushed, that thing that we got lit up, it's usually from the past when we felt less than. Something from the past where we felt threatened. And then we take it out and we look at it and we mentally connect it to whatever is going on right now right in front of us. Oh, this is like that, so, and I felt that way that time, so now I should feel the same way this time. Oh, I get it, you know? We do that all the time. It's like, it's like our mind, you know, we have this, this mental Rolodex we go through. God, there's a 1900s <laughs> reference. What, I don't know, what's the 21st century equivalent? <laughs> we go through our iPad and we... <laughs> mentally find something that's similar to the event we're in right now and we pull it out and we go, oh, okay, this is what happened then, this is how I reacted then, so this is the way I should react now. And I would hazard a guess, if I had to, that almost all or all of the responses that we have in our lives right now are generated from past events. It was all of them. You know, it just is, it, it, we are always dredging stuff up from the past that look like the situation we're in now, so we respond like we did then. We need to stop that. <laughs> Just stop. Just stop it. You know, there's an old expression. We used to use it in the PTA, particularly around fundraising. But we used to say, if you always do what you always did, you'll always get what you always got. 
Yeah, see, a lot, of, a lot of people work in nonprofits. Okay, it's true, though. It's true. So what if, just what if we viewed our life as if we were viewing it for the first time? How amazing would a flower be, right? What am, how amazing would a flower be if we actually saw it, if we actually looked at it like we had been seeing a flower for the very first time? How delightful, how wondrous. How amazing that would be. What if we discerned each situation we were in, each situation we found ourselves in, by that particular event, by that person that's in front of us, instead of liking it to the thing from the past? How would that be? How would that be? What if we suspended judgment? What if we just totally suspended judgment and viewed every single situation we were in just for what it was. How would that be? We could view it as a complete new and unique situation, something we'd never seen or heard before. You know that there's an old expression, you can never put your foot in the same stream, right? And it's true, because the water flows. You can put your foot in, you can take it out, you can put it right back in again. It's not the same stream. It's not the same water, because water flows. Same thing with life. It's never the same thing. It's never the same thing. And what happens is we trap ourselves in the drama of our lives by saying to ourselves, oh, yeah, 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 I know this one. I know this one. I've experienced this one before. This is the one where, you know, blah, 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 whatever, whatever, fill in the blank. Because I've been here before. I've done this before. So we judge others. We predict their behavior. We pass them or fail them. depending on the experience we had with someone altogether different in the past, right? Stop, stop doing it, (laughs) just stop. We have to stop right in the middle of the drama, right in the middle of the story, right in the middle of our own little soap opera. We have to stop and look at things with new eyes. All those experiences that we have collected over the years, all of them, those that we call good and those that we call bad, all of those experiences that we had are just that, experiences from the past. That's all they are. And as long as we keep dredging them up and using them to inform us as to how we should react or respond to the present situation, we're doomed to keep repeating the same old patterns. We're going to just do the same thing over and over again, right? And isn't that the definition of insanity, right? Doing the same thing over and over and expecting it somehow it's going to be different this time. Stop! Stop doing that. We have to look upon each situation as a new experience. You know, Ernest Holmes said, principle is not bound by precedent. I know you've heard that a long time, over and over. I'm sure every class you've ever been in in religious science has said that. Principle is not bound by precedent. Principle is not bound by precedent. And it's true. And it simply means that the principle, life, law, love, that thing that is eternally true about us, principle is not bound. It is not limited. It's not tied up with anything that has happened in our life before now. That's what it means. That principle is limitless. Possibilities are limitless. And and what we will pick and choose to manifest in our life is in no way limited by what happened in our life. We are free to choose again. And so knowing that, it is insane to keep pulling from the past how you are going to think and and act in the present. And that's our challenge then, to stop, to stop right there and take that breath before we respond and bring ourselves fully present in this moment, whatever it takes, whether it's a prayer, whether it's an affirmation, whether it's just a bit of silence, whether it's a touchstone or a, or a prayer bracelet, whatever it is to disengage from the automatic behavior of the past and bring ourselves fully present. That is our challenge, to stop, take a breath, and look at the situation with totally new eyes, with totally new eyes, because this situation has never been before. This person in this situation with you has never been before. It's happening now. Well, 
that being said, don't get me wrong. There are lots of little experiences we have gathered along the way that I don't think we have to relearn all the time. Like, please don't put your hand on a hot stove. You did that once. You know, you know that it's hot. <laughs> you don't have to burn yourself every single time. I get it. We don't have to look at the whole natural world with new eyes, like don't run into traffic. We know that one. We can hang on to certain facts that keep us, keep us safe and protected and alive. I'm talking about the things that are not working for us. Those things that are not working for us. If you're not getting the results in your life that you would like to manifest, well, those things that are not working in our lives, that's the things that you want to look at. If you're not getting the results you want, you look at those. We all get our hearts broken. Anybody here who's never had a heartbreak ever? <gasps> See, what a club we belong to. <laughs> it's happened to all of us. And when we start to protect ourselves from that hurt, what happens is we create masks, we create walls of separation, and yeah, it might protect us from being hurt again, but it also separates us from the livingness of life. We think we're going to protect ourselves from future hurt, but it keeps us separated more than anything else. You know, our walls and our masks, it may be the place where nobody gets in and nobody gets a chance to hurt us anymore, but we don't get to get out either. And we, we come to realize at some point that that wall is, is really our prison. It's really our prison. It come, becomes the place where we are totally separate and apart from everybody else. We don't heal when we're walled off from everybody, when we are preventing ourselves from having authentic interaction with other people. And, and, and we don't get to heal what it was that caused us to put up the mask and the wall in the first place. Here's the choice we have. We can be walled off from each other and life and all that life has to offer and all of those experiences, or we can heal the thing that created the wall to begin with. And that's our choice. We don't have to respond to people from the level of our wounds. We're free to heal them. We are free to heal them. The wound is the result of a past experience. The wounds that we create the walls around protect us, but we wrap ourselves up in it, and then we limit our ability to interact with life. Ernest Holmes said, healing is our birthright. I love that. Healing is our birthright. But, but he says this. He said, you cannot heal that which you see. Healing is unseeing that which is wrong and seeing that which is right. So he's telling us to shift our gaze. Stop, stop obsessing over the wound. Stop obsessing over the hurt. Shift your gaze. You're never going to heal the wound by continuing to stare at the wound. So you shift your gaze and you see that which is right. That which is right. It means we have to live our lives from that, from that position of undefended love. <gasps> oh, crap, is that not a scary thought? <laughs> I'm leaving now. <laughs> We have to live our lives as undefended love. We have to be that in the world. 
You know, there's that old saying about like dance like nobody's listening. No, <laughs> that's just not right. <laughs> dance like, whatever. Yeah, dance like no one's, okay. Well, you know what? I researched that. It's been attributed to everybody like in the 20th century. Everybody supposedly said that. Mark Twain said it. Albert Einstein said it. You look on the internet, they got like half a dozen people said it. So I really, really investigated it. I went back in, in time and in, um, it's a 1987 song by songwriter Susanna Clark and Richard Lay. And they composed this song, it says, Come From the Heart. And here are the actual lyrics. You've got to sing like you don't need the money. Love like you'll never get hurt. You've got to dance like nobody's watching. It's got to come from the heart if you want it to work. Ah, isn't that beautiful? I love that. Well, that's the real quote. <laughs> to me, that's saying the same thing. This is the undefended life. This is the undefended life. This is living out loud. You know, you break your walls down, all of the defenses that we've built up to keep ourselves safe, that has also kept ourselves isolated, you break them down, you trust, you risk, you live out loud. Come what may, come what may. This is living the undefended life. When we stop living from the woundedness, we decide to be healed from our previous wounds, and it is a decision. It is a decision. Then we can live out loud. Ernest Holmes said this. He said, our beliefs and our deep-seated convictions inevitably outpicture and reflect themselves in our experience and environment, both in the physical condition of the body and in the large world of our affairs. What we outwardly are and what we are to become depends upon what we are thinking, for this is the way we are using the creative power. So when you're using your creative energy to protect yourself from your wounds or protect your wounds from, from getting wounded even more, you're concentrating on woundedness. When we can heal our lives, we can stop this madness of dragging around our wounds and our resentments and our angers and our self-righteousness, and we can just love people. Just love them. If we put all that stuff down, you know, it takes more energy to hold stuff than it does just to let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let God be the source and supply of everything in your life. Just let it go. Lao Tzu said this, if you want to awaken all of humanity, then awaken yourself. If you want to eliminate the suffering in the world, then eliminate all that is dark and negative in yourself. Truly, the greatest gift you have to give is that of your own self-transformation. And that's what we're talking about. Want to transform the world? Transform ourselves. We transform ourselves first. It happens one conscious, awakened mind at a time, and then another, and then another, and then another. It ripples out like dropping a pebble in a pond. One consciousness at a time. We start inside our own minds. Stop, stop doing those things that make us miserable. Stop it. Go for the joy. Go for the love. Go for the undefended life. When we start living from our desires, instead of trying to protect from our fears, from the hurts of the past, we start living that undefended life. It's our choice. It is our choice. Stop living from the old stuff. Start living right here, right now, from this day, from this moment. Start living from love. Start living from joy. Start living from your authentic self. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.